I'm in Calcutta, West Bengal, India. I see many videos showing basically the most popular places to visit in Calcutta, Victoria Memorial, St. Paul's Cathedral, Writers Building. I tried to make it really quick, but first, photo shoot with locals. Victoria Memorial, the most famous landmark in Calcutta you see in every video on YouTube. It's integrated in 1921 by then Prince of Wales and it's made of white marble quarried uh, in Rajasthan state. This marble was supplied to Taj Mahal. Inside there is a statue of Queen Victoria underneath the main dome, this huge dome up there. of Victoria is supposed to be here but there is a mirror race course track opened in 1819 more than 200 years ago and it hosts polo club games since 1861 right in the heart of the city just beside Victoria Memorial it's huge Prince of God built in 1841 during British rush in the memory of Anglo-Indian scholar James Princep Hooghly River, Prince of God, Fort William but Fort William is a restricted area now cannot get to and even see how it looks like it's built in 1758 and now British military occupied like Eastern Command or something Eden Gardens, the oldest cricket stadium in India. It hosted World Cup 2011 and the home of the Knight Riders, one of the best team in India. Bangalore. 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 Oh, you come from Bangalore? No, 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 no. Ah, yeah, you live in Calcutta but support Bangalore, right? I love Bangalore. Oh, okay, okay. And they play with Riders today, right? Yes, yes. Nice to meet you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Shahid Minar or Martyrs Memorial. It's a 48 meters tall memorial to celebrate British victories in the Nepal wars. St. Paul's Cathedral, built in 1847. This Gothic cathedral has 75 meters by 24 meters iron trust roof and it was back then the longest roof in Spain in existence. Well, I can see wooden windows, looks very original, impressive. Indian Museum, the largest museum in India and probably in, in, in the entire Asia. Opened in 1814 but open for public in 1878 only. Also called House of Magic. Mother Teresa House, where she lived since 1950s until her death right here in September 5th, 1997. There's a her tomb inside and a lot of beggars outside. New Market, 
it's barely changed since it's opened in 1984. And I can even see the letters. Only one, only two letters are missing, 1874. So it's maintained its old charm since it's built back then. Maidan, one of the largest city center park in the world. 988 acre. It was established in 1758 by British Raj. Cleared the forest, there was a huge dense jungle to create a clear line of fire for guns at Fort Williams. So Fort Williams is over there and they cleared the forest this way. It's enormous in size. Raj Bhavan, built in 1803, the residence of the British Governor Generals until 1911, and now the official home of the Governor of Bengal. Inside you cannot enter, so I just see from outside. And this Gothic red building is Calcutta High Court, built in 1872, now it's restored and housing at Calcutta Museum. still being restored. It's gonna be a very nice place soon. St. Andrew's Church, built in 1818, at the place of old courthouse. And the last but not least is Writer's Building. It's currently a seat of West Bengal government and it's built in 19th century. And what's the most important, at this place there was a building which stood here. It was constructed in 1619 and it housed uh, writers and clerks of East India Company and there was somewhere a tank which served as the only fresh water source in Calcutta. I don't know where the tank is now, somewhere around, maybe they removed it, but the only source of drinking water in Calcutta was right here. Basically all this area is BBD bag and it's built by British to house some government buildings and to manage the country basically. So I can see this insurance building, bank building, some other colonial bank building, uh, this building, commercial library, all colonial British architecture and I bumped into this very nice, authentic British very nice, authentic British street sign, look it's at least 110 years old it's typical, typical British street sign this is already new one in Bengali but some small things are very, very well preserved from since British rush times. Wonderful. Hi. Hey. Tuk tuks in the street of Calcutta. But what I see is such yellow Hindustan ambassador cars. The signature of Calcutta. Look at this. Wow. And did you know that West Bengal law doesn't require rear view mirrors? So there's no rear view mirrors. And they can drive. Hi. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, Shakespeare Sarani. Okay. Astor, the Astor Hotel. Shakespeare Sarani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Astor Hotel. Astor uh, Hotel. Yeah, yeah. How much you charge? Uh, Two hundred. Two hundred. One hundred fifty. Where in here? Anyone by long route. Yeah, my done, my done. My done, my done, yeah. Okay. Right. 200. Done. Okay, for okay. right on this Hindustan Ambassador, okay, okay. 200. 200. Nice car. Oh, no refusal. So, West Bengal law doesn't require rear view mirrors. And uh, Hindustan Ambassador. The motors saving a lot of money uh, using this law and I don't see any rear view mirrors on this side particularly. How old is this car? Yes. 
How old is this car? Yes. Old? Old, 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 old. Very old? old uh, 13 years. 13? 13 years. Ah, 13. Ah, 13, 13. Oh, okay. One three, one day. One three, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah nice car. Thank you very much sir. Thank you sir. Very good okay. experience. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 So the reason there are a lot of Hindustan ambassadors in the state of Calcutta. Bye-bye. It's because they all manufactured in West Bengal in Atarpara, just 20 kilometers north from Calcutta, across the Kugli River. And that's why the streets of Calcutta, streets of Calcutta packed with the Hindustan ambassador since 1954. The Astor, built in 1905, it's almost 100 years old. Just five minutes walk from Maidan metro station, right in the heart of Calcutta, very affordable. 3,900 rupees a night, with breakfast included. It's a perfect deal for such location and such historical building. It's a very good way to experience some historical legacy, very good choice. Very nice window view. Famous Park Street. Once used to be called European Burial Ground because it ends with cemetery, which is the oldest in Calcutta. And this street was for a long time very famous for nightclubs, for live music, especially jazz, but now it's all gone. Only this part, western part, uh, has still support some live music, but during rush times it was very, very bustling. All colonial buildings, bars, some music and clubs still alive here at this part. This mural basically represents the life of the street, Park Street, all night, all night life. Oxford bookstore. I heard it's also quite famous. Yeah. Established in 1919, Calcutta. Wow. Impressive. Quite old library, but there's no wall maps, surprisingly. I thought to see in the wall maps. Another booksellers just beside the Oxford bookstore and all surrounded by British colonial architecture. Wonderful, amazing street. See another books and he's preparing to sell books as well. Look at this British colonial legacy and bars and nightclubs. Nineteen twenty-nine, and a lot of hipster cafes at Park Street. I'm gonna get some coffee. There's a barista coffee, looks good, and other China, other stuff. Oh, oh hi! You made it yourself? Yeah, mate. Made it yourself, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I finally see tram tracks, but I don't see the tram. How to get to the tram? And on Google Maps, this is a tram stop. See, this area got a lot of tuk tuk already. But no tram. I took tuk tuk instead of tram. Why there is no tram? Tram. No, I mean. Uh, Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, let's try the oldest metro system in India, which was opened in 1984. 
and Indira Gandhi established the first town in 1972. It is Soviet built metro, so all the designs are kind of Soviet Russian style. They have body weight for 5 rupees in metro. It is said to be the crowdest in India, half million passengers a day. For two stops, I paid only five rupees. It's, it's really nothing, it's for free basically. Very cheap. College Street, the heart of Bengali intellectual life and also the home of Calcutta University. Streets are packed with uh, textbooks, exam guides, second-hand books, all about education. This is Calcutta University, all along the street. It's founded in 1857 and moved to this location in 1873. This is the main campus, Hindi school. Then behind is a Sanskrit college. They learn Sanskrit over here. A medical part. So the whole stretch of College Street is educational. Very interesting that Sanskrit college is over here. It's opened even earlier than Calcutta University in 1824, 30 years prior. Founded to promote the study of ancient Indian languages, its history and culture. It looks old, but not 199 years old at the same place I believe what's also very interesting over here just across the street in this building is very very famous cafe Indian coffee house the traditional meeting place for the city's intellectual and studying circles favorite place among many generations a lot of poets freedom fighters revolutionaries meet here opened in 1942 very historical place Let's get inside. Coffee house. No seats, fully packed. But it's all around with uh, paintings, pictures of famous people. A lot of food options also. People eating, discussing intellectual life. Since 1942 at the same place. Very, very busy street. I expected College Street to be just very quiet and not that bustling. Oh, maps! Uh, West Bengal map. Oh, cool. many um, Indian maps and West Bengal maps. Just very cool. Everything educational here. Oh, I see maps again. Look. India. I'm right here, Calcutta. India. Wow. Cool. I bought this map from this guy for 150 rupiah. My, my room is full of different maps. This is another one for my collection. Since Park Street, as I mentioned, was kind of cosmopolitan part of the city, especially among British, there are also a lot of books being sold uh, right at this area, near the Indian Museum and Park Street itself. Hi! They're all new, is it? Yeah. Okay. So just uh, 600 rupees for brand new two books. Very good deal. It's like one US dollar or so for brand new books. The choice is really large. So this one, 350, right? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Thank you so much. Thank you.
found a wonderful dining spot for dinner. Blue and beyond the rooftop bar. Good affordable prices. And the most important is the view. Maidan is this side. I chosen to see the heart of the city. I couldn't find any tram in the city, so I'm coming to depot to have a ride. Let's see if it's even possible, because I'm not sure. Esplanade Station, so it's somewhere here. Metro Railway, Calcutta. Okay, approaching the depot, which I see on the map, just outside the Esplanade Metro Station. Those tracks at Esplanade is basically the first tram started uh, from here in, 19, in 1902, electrified. From Esplanade it departed. The very first train in 1902, but established the tram system in Calcutta in 1873. So it wasn't rectified until when? Until then. Oh no! It just departed! This is the tram! Hey no, I missed it. This is the tram! Ah, I just missed it. It was standing here and I heard the sound. At least I seen it. Okay, I will wait for another one. I cannot miss this opportunity. When? 30 minutes. 30 minutes yeah. Oh, every 30 minutes. Oh, there's some sort of a museum also at the terminal with old trams, old tram cars. Uh, apparently, this is uh, non electrified trams. What are people living in them? Seriously? It could be like a museum, but people just occupying them like it's some sort of accommodation. By the way, I made visa to India for five years because India is huge. There's so many cultures, so many places to visit, so many states. So I plan to visit many, many other places like South, East, North, uh, within this period of time and uh, beyond. So I'm gonna travel at least uh, once or twice a year to India so you can subscribe to see what I can explore and find some interesting places. And show how big India is and how versatile it is. Not far from Esplanade I was walking and I see tram tracks suddenly they disappear. And what's going on here? Oh, it's a metro station construction. So unfortunately tram, all tram days are about to be gone. But I think I'm sure they still will preserve the old tram and rides for tourists at least. It's a legacy of Calcutta. The most creative and talented local I've seen so far. Wow, good job. Wow, I see a lot of colonial buildings uh, are under renovation. So apparently government are working on uh, conserving the legacy of British Rush. Like this building, just opposite. It's very, very well renovated and maintained. This building will be as neat and as clean as that one. I'm sure Calcutta government will do many, many other buildings renovation and restoration because Calcutta has a huge colonial legacy of British Raj, architecture, trams, culture, all this, you name it. And the more tourists will find out about Calcutta and history and architecture and so on. Good job. Three? Three minutes. One more hour to train. Waiting for more than one hour for a tram already. 
There's no fixed schedule and ticket seller in the kiosk. He says he doesn't know when it comes. Must be every one hour, but still nothing. Unfortunately, I'm gonna give up and go explore over a bridge. Tram! I already sit in the taxi, but I see tram. Almost gave up. Here we go. I gave him 50 rupees because he turned on the meter and it was 30 rupees. So I gave him 50 to cancel. And cancel for this oldest operational tram in the world. <laughs> Finally, to make a turn. It's not 1902. No, no, no. No? Because it started 1902. Yes. No. But, but the tram is of 1988. 1988? Yes. Ah, so it's only like 35 years old? Yes. Ah. This particular tram is from 1980. This is, this, is, ah. this is the build of this tram. Ah, okay, 1988. Oh, okay, I thought it's like 120 years old. Yes. So most no, of the hundred years old are discontinued. Those are discontinued. Are discontinued, huh? Yeah. Worth the wait. I waited for one and a half hour. Oh, yeah. Here. Here. We are also waiting for the same, right? Bye-bye! Wow! What an experience! Amazing! Walking to Hobra Bridge. It carries a daily traffic of approximately 100,000 vehicles and around half million people every day commuting back and forth. It was built in 40s and back then it was the longest, third longest cantilever bridge in the world. Now it's sixth longest cantilever bridge in the world. So I think I will stop here because I took the wrong path. Basically Armenians, they already settled here before British came in 17th century. And there's Armenian church somewhere I think this way, which is very old. It's been, it was built in 1724 and it's said to have the oldest working clock in Calcutta. I want to see the clock. And this is another sign. Uh, Europeans been here is the cathedral of the Most Holy Rosary. And Armenian church is just behind these buildings. So this area been settled before, even before British. 1724 Armenian church. It's very hidden. There is some uh, small alley. And here is, uh, you cannot see the entrance to this alley from Main Street. And here we go. 1724 Armenian Church. Calcutta. Ah, I wrecked it 1707. My mistake. Huh? Closed, closed. Ah, closed already. Oh, yeah, it's closed. And doors, I don't know, is it original or not? Looks very, very old. Wonderful. At least I visited it. Here is it from the alley. And why there is a 1707 erected here, uh, stated on the wall? Because at this site was originally a wooden church, uh, dated back in 1688, but it was burned down in 1707. And also there are some graves at the cemetery, dated 1630. But unfortunately, only a few hundred Armenians now left in Calcutta. They have several churches over there, a school, a club, and also a rugby team. I just walked three minutes from Armenian church and there's a synagogue, Magen David synagogue. Number one, and just behind this building is second synagogue. 
another three minutes walk. It's built in 1884 when Calcutta Jews came from Iraq and formed a prosperous community. But they immigrated to Israel, US, UK since the end of World War I and there are only like 100 families, Jewish families left in Calcutta. And that's why there are two synagogues quite close to each other. I can see it. There's the another synagogue. Very rich history of Calcutta. basically entered the uh, uh, Chinatown and I cannot see any Chinese uh, signs yet this is Tireta Bazaar the heart of Chinatown trading they settled in 18th century here and since 1962 when Indian and Chinese troops clashed at the border the population of Chinese here greatly reduced but there's still some like 5,000 Chinese citizens but most of Chinese buildings they disappeared I heard there are some number of Chinese, still Chinese restaurants making uh, called Chinjobi, Chinjabi food. It's a, a fusion of Indian and Chinese food. Okay, I walk around Chinatown. Haven't seen any Chinese characters, neither people or newspapers. I'm sure there's still some legacy of it exists, but I'm going to the airport already. I haven't explored Calcutta much because it's huge. There are so many places. I haven't even visited Calicut, initial Calcutta village. And there are so many, many places I haven't explored in this big city. Very diverse, very culturally rich. Okay, that's it. I'm going to the airport. Thank you for watching. It was Calcutta, West Bengal, India. And I go home to rest. <clears throat> 38 degrees every day quite tiring need some real rest bye